that knows you as God. Welcome to a place that sees who you of you who joined us during the song. Again, happy Sunday. It's great to see everyone here. Now I'm going to turn it over to Sylvia Kearns, licensed science of mind practitioner and ministerial student to pray us in. Thank you for that beautiful song, Dr. Barbara. And as we softly close our eyes and lean into that welcome song, for our hearts and minds have surely joined together in that unity of the oneness. For the beauty of the words, the beauty of each person in this room is the face of God present right here and right now. And I claim for our time together as melody brings words of wisdom, inspiration, and joy to this gathering spiritual community on the Zoom line. Knowing that the beloved that is within us is the beloved that is within melody. And we join together in joyful harmony. I claim for this time together the wisdom of all time be present, knowing that each one of us are unique individuals called to be, to do what is ours to do. And through that wisdom, we hear what is ours to hear, although the messages may be so different. For that love that abounds throughout all of life since the beginning of time is as powerful in this room, in this place, right here, right now, as it was thousands of years ago. For it is the same love, the same presence, and the same divine consciousness. It is with great gratitude for Zoom technology 
for our beloved Dr. Barbara, for each person in this room that have come today to be inspired together in spiritual community. But I release this word into the action and activity of the law where spirit says, yes, yes, my beloved, today is a wonderful day. And together we say, and so it is. So it is. Thank you, Sylvia, for that wonderful invocation. I'm so excited this morning, folks. We are welcoming Melody Cooper as a speaker here at Open Door. Melody is the past music director of Unity of the Keys. Uh, she's a harpist, a pianist, uh, uh, a singer. Uh, she's amazing. And when she and I kind of stumbled across each other on Facebook, I thought, oh my gosh, wonderful. We've got to bring her to Open Door. So thank you for being with us, Melody. I am just thrilled uh, to welcome you to Open Door. Yeah. You're muted, Melody. I guess that's my cue, huh? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I am, I'm so glad to be here and I really want to thank my friend Deborah for connecting me to this community. So the title of my talk today is How You Finish What You Start and What I'm Learning During This Process. So I'm sure everybody can relate to this, but I'm a person that gets easily distracted by shiny objects. Um, with my dog, we call it squirrel, but with myself, I call it classes. I'm the kind of person that, um, especially now with Zoom, it's like all these great classes that you can take. And every time I start on something, it's like, ooh, you know, this is an opportunity to do this and that and this and that and this and that. And between taking all these different classes, and then I'm sure all of us have been spending a lot more time on the computer and getting lost in uh, Facebook, seeing everybody's kids' pictures and political things and what my husband likes to call doom scrolling, you know, the, the latest, oh, I can't believe this. It's really hard to get lost in that and to spend a lot of time and to so easily get distracted. So I, I am really aware of my um, distractions and what keeps me from finishing projects. And a lot of times these, these distractions are not tragic. I mean, they, they take me and they take all of us into very interesting classes, meeting new people, doing new things. I mean, it's not like a terrible thing. However, it does sort of get you off course from what you were trying to do. Um, for instance, I bought this looper. I wanted to try and use a looper on my harp. And it's, you know, I got it out of the box and like figured out how to turn it on. And it's still sitting in the box. So, you know, a couple of days ago, I took it out of the box. I brought it into my practice room. I brought all the wires that I need and there, you know, took that step and there it is. So it's like, that's, you know, I, and I have a whole recording set up and, and I set it all up, figured out how to use it. And there it sits and it's sit, it has sat there for long enough that now I'm going to have to go back and figure out how to use all these things again, because I sort of got off track and did something else. So I thought to myself, okay, this winter, when I don't have to go to a job, because I'm sort of on a out of work from the COVID that I have time. I have time to, to finish some projects and I have time to do all these new years, um, new beginnings. And I'm sure that um, so many of us are, you know, have done this before. We see the new year or the winter solstice or after the holiday season as the time to make new beginnings and to start new projects. So um, especially after last year, the last year was filled with such uncertainty and a lot of us lost our bearings. And I, I learned a lot last year about myself. I learned that 
I'm not really defined by my job. I'm really defined by what it was that drew me to my job. That's really who I am. And it took months to figure that out. And I got really depressed. I was worried about money. I was worried about who am I if I'm not performing? But it's silly because who you are, you're always who you are. And you know, your job is not who you are. Your job is your job. So who you are is what, what drew you to that job? So I come up with a lot of creative ideas all the time. That's, that's the kind of mind that I have. And um, I've even given talks about, and now the second step, like how to, how to keep going on a project when, when that first initial excitement loses its sparkle. And I have finished a lot of creative projects. I've written um, one woman shows, I've organized fundraisers, I even started a whole series of um, Iberian Latin American music called Spanish Rhapsody. I've painted most of my new house, I've planted a garden. Yay me, I've done all these things, right? So when I had a look at why could I accomplish all these things and not others, I found some very common threads between them. And one of the um, most common thread between them was that the creative projects had deadlines. Like I had a show that, you know, I booked a theater, the show was March 1st, I had to do it. So I had to set up a whole um, timeline to finish it. Another common thread between them was that I was accountable to other people. I had to organize rehearsals, I had to organize press releases, I had to finish grants, um, I had to get my house back in order for my family. So, and another thing that all of these um, goals and projects that I had that I did accomplish was that they excited me, they excited my soul, they excited my dharma, my purpose. They brought me and they brought other people joy. So I had all this like motivation to, um, to finish them. So I think that happens to a lot of us. We get this idea, we get really excited about it. It seems like a really good idea. And then as we go along, we lose steam. Um, life, you know, happens, things happen in your life you weren't expecting like COVID or, you know, different things. I was told by a Spanish coach that I was working with that most of his students stopped about two thirds of the way towards fluency when they were that close that something always happened that stopped them from finishing it. So why did I choose to talk about finishing a goal as a talk at a spiritual center? Like what made me think that this was an appropriate topic and the answer is because some of the things that help you accomplish a goal are practical, like deadlines and accountability. And some of the answers have to do with our purpose, our dharma, what makes us, us. I was so inspired by the talk that um, Sally Robbins gave last week when she was talking about how you can really only follow your dharma and that being a light in the world is no small thing. And even thinking like this, I mean, what opportunities arise in your life by even thinking like this and even more acting and connecting with that. So one of the most common threads through all the projects that I accomplished was that it made me feel good. So it made me feel good on a very, very deep inner level and it also made me feel good on a, on a shallow level. It just made me feel good to go check, did that, check. So it's like, um, it's like when you're 20 something and you skip lunch and you, you know, you lose enough pounds to look really fab in those jeans. It's like easy, easy to skip lunch then. You know? Not that I'm recommending you do that. I was just thinking that that was something I used to regularly do. It's like, oh, I have this dress, but you know, so I'll just like skip a meal and it'll be perfect to you know? So, or like if you make a gift for someone or do something for somebody and you just feel really great afterwards. So um, 
one of the other reasons that I'm really into this subject right now is um, normally I work in Key West in January and this year the seminar that I work for is canceled. So I have January and there are all these um, boot camps and challenges and new year's projects that I have time to do. So in December, I joined a five day boot camp and the boot camp is called Get More Done in Less Time for Musicians. It's a it's a challenge about how to set up and achieve your goals. And it goes it had a five day boot camp and the project <clears throat> and the project is that you set five goals to finish in 90 days and it takes you through this process. So very interestingly, the very first day, the step was identify your core values. Not was I expecting from this challenge. So you had to either come up with your own words, you had to come up with five core values, five things that were non-negotiable to you as a person and also to you as a musician. So, um, easy to work with, um, professional, um, happy, joyful, respectful, whatever, you know, things came up for you. And these five non-negotiable values, that was your task, your homework for the day. So what a great exercise, not just for musicians, but for all of us to think, what are the five things? Like you could list 20, and then go through them and pick the five things that were the most important things to you that are non-negotiable to you as a person when you present yourself, when you participate in this world. What a great thing to even consider. So I thought, wow, this boot camp is a lot deeper than I thought. This is great. I think that it's very difficult to finish a goal if it doesn't relate to some of your core values. It's, it's hard to stay motivated. So I think what she was trying to do was to start us off with motivation from deep within, not just the motivation to, I want to get this next job, but motivation as a person and motivation for whatever it is that you're trying to do, make dinner, get a new job, learn a new song. So it's kind of like this new movie, Soul, that's out. I don't know if any of you have seen this new Disney movie. And this whole theme of um, finding out who you really are and having that motivate how you live your life. And it's not always what you think it is, but the things that you are drawn to on externally are often the things that lead you to deeper discoveries. So the second day of this brain dump, of this uh, boot camp was something called a brain dump. And what it was was you, you wrote down every single project that you could possibly think you wanted to accomplish in this in this year of 2021. So like I had 40 things on there, right? And then you pick five projects. And these five projects had to pass a SMART criteria. And the SMART criteria is this, S for specific. So SMART, S for specific had to be a specific project. M, it had to be measurable. You had to be able to say, I start and I finish doing this. It had to be attainable. So it had to be something you truly could accomplish or thought you could. It had to be relevant to the project, which was a music project. And it had to be time bound. So it had to be something that in 90 days you were going to do. Smart criteria, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Then we had to check and see, do, do, the, do, 
do these five projects I've chosen, do they, do they align with my core values? Do they relate to that? And then we were given five um, categories, which were relative to this particular challenge. They were marketing, monetary, creative, growth, and community. So she kept surprising me with all these deep insights into getting things done, not just practical, which is why I wanted to talk to you all about this. And then what you would do is you would um, take your five goals and see where they fell into these five categories and see that, you know, did they really, how, how did they relate to your core values? And here's the super, super hot tip that happened. You pick five things and you have 90 days to accomplish them. All the other things on your list, you do not do. Which sounds so obvious, but it's really hard, actually, because they bubble up in your mind like, oh, but I, I could get this done or no, you put it in something called an inspiration vault which could be a file, a folder on your computer. It could be a notebook. It could be, I have a glassine um, like, like packet that has notebooks and papers. I have a folder on my computer that says new ideas, new projects. You put it aside knowing it's not going anywhere and that in 90 days you can pick another five. And that is the hardest thing is to just really say, okay, I'm going to do these five now. It's not like the other ideas are going to disappear. I'm not going to forget them because I've written them down. I have them, you know, put somewhere. It's like making a list so you don't have to carry your grocery list in your head. You write it down, you put it in your computer or something like that. So this is the beginning of the challenge. You have motivation and you have ideas. Then you take each idea, you make a page for each idea, and you write down every single thing, every little step it will take to accomplish that goal. And it could, it could be um, buying new equipment, it could be opening a book, it could be um, organizing you know, your music, it could be, um, one of my goals was um, I need to update my website and I need to add video content. So in order to add new video content, I had to choose the songs. That's one step. I had to practice them. I had to figure out how to record them, to figure out how to load them in the site. I had to find a good backdrop, a quiet space. Um, there were other aspects of updating your website, like updating your calendar, adding new links. I mean, there's a, so I listed every single little step that related to that. Then you take out a calendar and you write in these steps. So on Tuesday, I'm going to update my calendar for February. On Wednesday, I'm going to get the book back out for the um, recording device and see how it works. I mean, whatever it is, and you actually write it in a calendar. So you either write it down on a paper calendar or I've got a um, Google calendar and I started a separate calendar that was like a project calendar. I looked at an app called um, Asana, which is like the yoga word asana, but without the accent. And uh, that app lets you start projects and also do projects with other people. It's a really interesting app and it has calendars and it'll come up, it'll send you um, uh, reminders to do things. So whatever works for you. So now you have a step-by-step, -step, you have a schedule of when you're gonna do each step. So that like on Monday, I could look at my step, I could do that one step, it's small enough that I can do it and I check it off. So you have five projects, so you don't have to do all five projects every day. You can say, okay, um, Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm gonna work on the website. Wednesday, I'm going to work on this 30 day practice um, I'm doing. There's, you know, whatever. You, you pick it out and you, if it doesn't work for you, you can change it, but you do schedule it. And you do literally schedule it on a calendar of some kind. 
And then we were um, encouraged to find an accountability partner. So I've been talking to a woman, a cellist from Indiana. She's a symphony cellist. Um, her goals and her um, life is different than mine. And we've been talking on Zoom once a week to encourage each other, to figure out problems we're having, to just talk about how that last week the world's um, political doings were so distracting and made it really hard for us to focus, you know, and um, yeah. One of the things when I was talking to my accountability partner, we both of us went off the rails and didn't really get the check off every day thing. It was the second week and, uh, you know, like the second step, which is sometimes hard. And also it was just so distracting, everything that was going on. And if you're a person of conscience, you couldn't help but be distracted somewhat by it. So I, I, I woke up feeling like something of a project failure. It's like, oh, I was going really great, checking everything off, and then I just couldn't concentrate. And we just talked to each other, and it's like, okay, well, what have you done so far? What have you accomplished so far in these projects? So we just talked about what we'd already done. Um, and I thought, yeah, you know, good for you, girl. You started it. You know, you're doing it. And here you are talking to your accountability partner. You're, you're owning up to what you want to do, and... Um, I thought, yeah, you know, you have to build on the successes that you have too. So um, there is an actual technique about building on your successes. Um, it's kind of an exercise that I went through on New Year's Day with um, Ziva meditation, which is a meditation technique uh, started by Emily Flesh Fletcher. <clears throat> it's something you can check out. She has a free um, um, finish strong, start stronger exercise. And what this exercise is, is you look back on 2020 and you celebrate your successes of 2020. So you, you it's just an exercise in different parts of your life. Um, your professional life, your personal life. Um, what are you doing to take care of your physical body that you're proud of? What's one thing that you learned or that you're grateful for in your spiritual life? What accomplishments are you most proud of in your financial life? What is one thing about your home that brings you joy that happened last year? So there are these questions. You look back on your year, you look back on the challenges and what you learned, and you look back on your successes and you acknowledge your successes. So it's really hard to be motivated to do things if you don't think you can succeed. If you don't acknowledge that you have succeeded in doing plenty of things. I mean, you've gotten this far by accomplishing a lot. So sometimes you have to really say, hey, yay me. You know, I did do that. Yeah. You know, I learned how to make chili. I mean, it doesn't have to be big, you know. It just, just acknowledge that you are capable of success so that if you take on a project which maybe seems overwhelming and you break it down and you make a calendar and you check in with someone, you actually can do it and proved by your successes from the last year. And then the exercise goes on to what would you like to accomplish in 2021? And the same sort of categories, if you're still working, what would you like to accomplish in your professional life, in your personal life? What ways of taking care of your body would you like to incorporate? Your relationships, your spiritual life, your financial life. So it is on Facebook Live. It's Finish Strong, Start Stronger, Ziva Meditation. And it's a really great, just like, I don't know, 20 minute um, 
I don't know if it's 20 minutes, it might be 40 minutes, um, exercise that she leads you through that I found really helpful. And then at the end, it's like, what, what is the most motivating force in you right now? Can you describe that with a word? Which is kind of similar to the white stone ceremony. I don't know if any of you have ever been through the white stone ceremony where you go into meditation and you just see if a word bubbles up that, that is inspiring you when you think about the new year to come. And it's not something you, it's usually done at New Year's, but it doesn't have to be. You could do it anytime you start a new project, on your birthday, when you move to a new place, start a new job. It's kind of a nice meditation to do when you start something new. So my word for this year is, surprise, surprise, finish. So that I can learn how to finish not just the creative projects, but the nitty gritty things that I need to get done for um, my work and also to be a healthy, happy woman. So that, that is my goal. And by looking back and seeing that you're capable of doing pretty amazing things, actually, you can build on your successes. And it, it kind of reminds me of this song by um, Janice Stanfield and Megan McDonald. You will do amazing things with each choice each new day brings and with every step you take bless the progress that you make the reason you there in every gift you give. Love your life, love your dreams. You will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing. You will do amazing things amazing amazing you will do amazing things so around our house around our house it's really common for us to just like break out in song like in the middle of talking to each other I actually didn't know that like everybody doesn't do that. <laughs> I was in the car with a, a friend once from West Virginia and my husband and I were talking and we burst out into a taste of honey. And uh, this poor guy, I don't think he could have sat any lower in his back seat. He was so afraid that, that one of his neighbors would see him like with us because we were just like, a taste of honey. <laughs> anyway, I think it just, Life is a musical, what can I say? <laughs> so just to recap, there's a lot of inner um, motivation and inner strength and inner success that leads you to finish things. And there are also practical things like deadlines, um, calendars and scheduling, uh, accountability. And there is also um, something I'd really like to stress to end this, and that is to be in a supportive community. And sometimes the community that's most supportive of you is not, um, it's not just one community that supports you. So you may not be getting emotional support, let's say from your job or professional support from your home, but you know, you seek out the support you need. And I know that all of you know this because that is why we're here today. We're here today because we're all on a spiritual path and it, it's strengthening to, to gather in community to share that. So these things are also really important to help you finish your goals. Deadlines, accountability, calendars, community, mm -hmm. and clarity. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to take a challenge for yourself, knowing that you can finish what you start because you can do 
amazing amazing you can do amazing things amazing amazing you can do amazing things love your life love your dreams you can do amazing things thank you beautiful thank you melody wonderful i i love the whole thing of bursting into song you know <laughs> I, since i am home so much now i listen to a lot more radio and i have serious radio so i can pick my my genre or whatever and, uh, you know, a lot of what I've listened to is 50s and I'm dancing and I'm singing and my cats are leaving the room <laughs> and I don't care. So it's fantastic. That was really a wonderful, inspirational message. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go ahead and put this information in chat. Um, and I don't think, do we, do we have a piece of music, Sylvia? I don't think we do this morning. Okay, great. I didn't think about that. Sylvia's on her iPad and I just didn't think about pulling something up for us. I do want to say, I love that song, um, by Megan, whose last name I cannot remember right now. Carol and I got to hear her sing that at Bodie Spiritual Center up in mm -hmm. Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Years ago. My friends played for that yeah. service, yeah. yeah. She's fantastic. So she really Megan McDonough, D O N O U yeah, 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 yeah. and I, Jenna Stanfield. They wrote it together. Okay. I couldn't, couldn't think of her last name. She's fantastic. So um, let's see. So let's do this now. Let's do what we would be doing if we were together at Open Door Center face to face. Let's step into a prayer, a blessing. We started this many, many months ago as a way to direct our positive love and energy to children experiencing separation from their families. And since COVID, we have extended this love, this energetic lightening and, and leavening process to every being everywhere, all creatures, great and small, those we see and those we do not, we claim and know for everyone from ourselves extending outward that each and every one is lifted, enlightened. The burden of the journey is softened. Each heart is opened and everyone everywhere feels a deepening of connection, of vibrancy with that which is the very essence of life itself. We feel ourselves surrounded, sweetened, loved, and connected. And we know that it is good and very good. All that is unfolding, everything, determines the very greatest, the most loving, connecting, coherent process for all of us, everyone, every species, and for this amazing planet on which we dwell. We say thank you for our ability to change everything alchemically, energetically, through our consciousness, through our claiming, adhering to, and knowing that all that is unfolding is for the very highest and best of everyone. We let this go and know it's done in this way. And together we say, and so it is. Very sweet. I want to thank all of you who have supported and gifted Open Door this month. If you wish to make a donation, you can do that through several venues. Um, our website is not in chat. Let me put that over there now. The 
here we go. There's our website. Um, you can make a donation by going to our website, clicking on the donate button. At the bottom of the page, uh, there will be another place to click where you can make a donation either through PayPal or through a debit or credit card. You can also mail a donation to Open Door CSL, and that address is 30 North Ridge Point, apartment T5, townhouse 5, Silver, North Carolina, 28779. A couple of reminders. Yesterday, I sent out a flyer for our workshop with, Doug, with Dr. Barnsley Brown. Um, this is coming up on Sunday, January the 31st. That's two weeks from today. Um, and I don't have the flyer in front of me. The, the workshop is, uh, it's actually a play shop. Let me get the name, the title correct there. Um, it is based on Dr. Barnsley's two books that she has written about prosperity. Um, so check your email, uh, you should have that. If you wish to register, the best way to do that is to send me an email at opendoorcsl at gmail.com and just let me know you wish to register and make sure if I don't have that already that I have a current phone number for you so that I can get in touch if we need to do that. There are some materials for this play shop that Dr. Barnsley wishes for you to have and print prior to uh, our time together on January 31st. So just pay attention to your email. We'll be getting that out directly uh, as soon as we see your registration. That ought to be a lot of fun. Barnsley is just a ball of fire all the time. Um, and let's see, I also sent out this week, just earlier today, an updated list of the items that we have for sale. These are things that we are moving out of our space on Pondview Drive. Um, if you are interested in something, please follow the directions and text or call me. Um, I do not have this Gmail account on my phone and I will not respond as rapidly if you email um, your, you know, your interest or if you have questions. I think most everything is pretty well described, but if you do need further information, get in touch. Or if you're inter interested in something, let me know. The one last thing I also want to tell you is that this coming Thursday, would be Ernest Holmes' birthday. So, you know, celebrate guys. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be having this community. We wouldn't be, uh, you know, apprised of this teaching, gifted of the amazing things that New Thought brings and, or, and specifically Science of Mind bring to us if it weren't for Ernest. Um, you know, he was born, he, he a lot of times, I, I love what Melody shared today. You know, a lot of times we look around at what's going on in our life and we go, well, I can't do this until I have this, or I can't do that until this works out this way. And sometimes things are contingent on things, you know, on certain conditions, but Ernest is a prime example of someone who didn't have squat. This was the last child born in a family of nine boys. That family was itinerant. What does that mean? It means they lived in people's barns and with friends and in caves until he was 10 or 11 years old. He didn't look at the world and say, I don't have this, so I can't do that. He just asked, what if, what does this mean? What is that about? Why is this happening? And his curiosity opened up volumes and volumes and volumes of amazing information for us. Truly, he was someone centuries before his time when we realized that the the core components of science of mind really are quantum science in nature this is fascinating stuff so we're so blessed to be here and to have this teaching and this community and each other so um you know if things are getting to you this week reach out connect with someone get in touch let folks know that you know that you're um kind of loose loose around the edges. Um, yeah, shout out to somebody. So, and Sylvia asked if we can invite others to the workshop, to the play shop. You are welcome to share the flyer that was sent out. I know Barnsley would love to have a big grand community of folks attending this. It's gonna be a lot of fun and it is something of a fundraiser for Open Door. So, you know, your, your um, love offering will be shared with both Open Door and uh, with Dr. Barnsley. So yeah, please do share it, send it off, give it, give it to everybody you know, 
um, I don't know who can use a little more prosperity in their lives. So I know a lot of people who need it. I know I'm one of one that was always looking for ways to uplift my prosperity consciousness. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that experience, as you can tell. I think that is all that I have to share. So now I'm going to turn it over to Deborah Belcher, licensed science of mind practitioner to pray us out. After that, you're welcome to unmute and we'll stick around and say hi for a few minutes. Deborah. So as we close our official celebration time together, I know that we go forth being life and celebrating life. Life is spirit, is all there is. And everything is a manifestation of that, is a gift of information, is our expression. There is just only one thing, and we have experienced that today in very practical, grounded ways to move ourselves forward with our expression in the world. And at this time, I know that each of us is more empowered by what we did today to express, to shine our light, to be the contribution that we came here to be. At this time, that one small thing in the universe is the greatest contribution we can be and make. And so I know that we are each strengthened to do this and clarified to do this. I know that the skills and tools we were given, we are able to take in and use to support ourselves, to be our contribution in spite of what is going on and perhaps fueled by what is going on because it all works together. It is all God unfolding no matter what it looks like. Evolution is assured, spiritual upliftment is happening, even when it appears not to be, even when it feels otherwise. We know and rest on and stand on that faith and that truth that there is only one, we are that one, and by our choices, we express that one and evolve spirit itself as we evolve ourselves. So now I know that with this knowing and this information, we are blessed and a blessing in what we do this day, this week, and in all of our lives and times. And knowing this, I know a peaceful, stable, clear-minded, open-hearted week for each one present. I know that this week, our world, our nation, our government, all people, all parties go forward in healing together. Mm -hmm. Whatever we experience, we have created it all together. And our only way through it and to something greater is together. So I bless us all with this unity. And I know that this word is true. And with gratitude to and for all present for the message we've heard, for each contribution, for every breath we have shared, I release this with great gratitude into law knowing that this is our truth as we say together and so it is yes sweet wonderful thank you deborah for that beautiful closing folks you're welcome to unmute and we'll hang out for a few minutes <laughs>